Hello my friends and welcome to the second part of my font secrets and I have another great list of tools and know-how that will help you a lot with working with fonts. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and let's get started. So the first big question from the community was how do I find out what kind of font is used in a picture that I've found and I like the font. Here's a website that I will link in the video descriptions. It's from myfonts.com. It's called What the Font. And you just drag in here a picture with a text that you want to identify. It doesn't work 100% of the time. You say no text found. So I need to crop it to the exact location where my font is. I have written this font, my, uh, this text myself, so I can compare it. Now I click on the arrow again. And it will suggest me a list of fonts. You can see here it says Scripta, Catchwords could be it, Las Enter could be it, or these other fonts. Let's go over to Affinity Photo, click on the font that I've used, and it's actually Las Enter. So this is really useful. Um, like I said, it doesn't work 100% of the times, but I found that often it works very well, and it's one of these fonts suggested here. Um, so this is really a great tool. Another thing that people ask is how do I identify a, a font that is used on a website? And for example, if you have the Chrome, Chrome browser, you can use what font? It's a plugin. You will see this little icon up here. And when you click on it, the tool is activated. So I will go over to Google Fonts here. And um, of course, here it tells me right away what the name of the font is, but this is just a test to see if it works and identifies the correct font. So I click here and then I go over the font and you see um, it immediately tells me the correct font name and I can click on it. This will open a little window and tell me even more. So the font that we can see here is called Roboto Slap. The style is normal, the weight is 400, the size is 40 pixel, the line height is 44 pixel, stuff like that. Even the font color here, it gives a list of how the font looks alphabetically. So that's really nice. And I can do this um, for all the fonts on the page and it will always open this kind of window for me. If you want to close the window, there's this little X here. You can close it, no problem. Okay. The next thing I want to tell you about is how to understand terms of fonts, which is just very important. The two most uh, used terms that you will hear are serif and sans serif. So serif means, as you can see here, that the end of the fonts, uh, of, the, of the individual letters, have these little how can I say notches to them? Let's make this a little bit bigger. You can see here, this has a little bit of a lip here and the H has a lip here and the P has a lip up here and two lips down here and stuff like that. If you go to sans serif, on the other hand, this does not happen. Whoops. You can see here, if I make this bigger, the T, the F, the B, nothing, the H, all are just clean lines. They don't end in any kind of lips. And this means sans serif. So without a serif is the what sans means. Then you have the display font. And don't be confused by that term. Display font does not mean that it is specifically good for displays as you might think. It means that this is a font that is used very well if you want to display something. So you want to highlight something. For So this is if you have a catchy phrase or if you have um, like a ad slogan or um, the, how can I say, the name of your book, stuff like that. These fonts work well with them. They are more flashy. They are more fancy. They stand out more, as you can see here. You're not going to use them for flowing text. You're using them for a headline or a slogan, stuff like that. This is why it's called display. And then down here, we have something called monospace, which on other pages will be called fixed width, which I think is a better description. And this means that all the letters in the font have the so at uh, the same horizontal width so they all use the same space next to each other and 
This makes it sometimes a little bit easier to find the right um, space between the individual letters to create a um, more uniform, more homogeneous design. On other occasions, it might not be the right choice, but now you know what that means. By the way, right now I am on Google Fonts, which is a great source for fonts because first of all, they are free. And secondly, uh, which is also important, is that they are easy to use on the internet. So what you can do here, you can use them directly from the how can I say from the Google service on your website, but you can also download them. The download version or the download function is a little bit hidden. Uh, so you click on the plus here and it says one family selected. So a collection of fonts or the subsets of the fonts, for example, if you have the regular, the slim, the bold, the um I say different versions of the same font, they are called a font family. So this is what it's meant down here. And if you click on this, it will give you different options. So you see here, you can embed the font on your website with this link. You can also use it in your CSS script. So that's the styling script for your website. Or up here, you have this icon for download. You can directly download the font or you can use a font manager like Sky Fonts, for example. Um, usually I download fonts, but you can try this, uh, the, the uh, font manager if you want to. So that is all very easy. And this is how you get the fonts. You just click on this and then click on the little icon here for the download. Okay, so... Of course, there's not just Google Fonts to do that. I will show you another page uh, that I use a lot. It's called dafont.com. I will link all these pages in the video description. Here you have a lot more search terms. This is why I like it more. And you have a search bar up here where you can enter any kind of text. Over here where it says basic in the middle, you see the same terms. So it says sans serif, serif, fixed width, and then various, which is just the rest. Okay, and then there's a lot of other descriptions. And um, the good thing here is if you search for a font, it immediately tells you if um, it's free for use uh, uh, or free just for personal use or it's donation where there's different kind of types uh, of fonts. And when you click on one of these terms, for example, let's go serif, uh, you can go here to more options and click on 100% free. So it will show you only um, the fonts that you can use 100% free, even for commercial um, cases. If you have found a font that you like, you just click here on the download. It will download a zip file. And uh, let's do this right now. I've downloaded the font already. This one is called Fake Serif. You double click on it. If you don't have anything to unzip it, you can download something like Winra or any other kind of free application to unzip the file. Double click on it. Um, it will give you this list here of files that's included. And often you will find two files. One is called OTF. The other one is called TTF. OTF is the open type font. TTF is the true type font. The true type font is wider spread, but it's an older format. The open type font is a newer format. Um, but it works, it has more features, it generally works better and has more variation inside the font or has the possibility for more variation inside the font. So usually I would suggest to use the open type font and you just double click on it and it will open this window. In Windows this is, on, on Apple I think it's also double click and then you install it. So um, click on install, it will install real quick and then that's it. And remember the font name. So this one is fake serif. And I can immediately without reopening Affinity Photo, I can go in here and I can use uh, the font. You can see here it is fake serif and there I have it. I can immediately use the font in my text. So that's super easy uh, to use. Is there something else I wanted to show you? Oh, there's a definition of open type, postscript and true type. I will also link this kind of information in the video description. Uh, another question from the community was how to use uh, swashes, text swashes. So you have these kind of fancy lines 
around text. And I have a tutorial for that. It's called Spice Up Your Fonts. I will also include that as a link in the video description. And I show here how you can uh, paint extra lines around the font uh, to make it look more interesting. Let's uh, click here. And you can see here you have these fancy lines around these. These are usually called swashes and you have them often on the start or the end. And um, the way I do it is I just paint them in by hand because then you can get any form you like. Uh, otherwise you would have to search for fonts that already have these uh, designs as part of the font and this might take a long time to really find the right one that actually not only looks good but then also fits to the design that you want to create so I rather paint it by hand. Okay another thing um, that's important that I want to show you is this page it's called lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum is the classic fill text that you use if you don't have a text yet for your uh, finished design and uh, it's called just ipsum.com it's it's just um any kind of it, it it's not really a useful uh, text with any kind of information in it it's just like a latin text or there's like also english versions of that and you use that as a fill text because it flows very well and it's um similar to uh, how can I say, any kind of random text you would use. So this is much better than typing anything in on your own. So do you have here a very good like standard text that you can use for any kind of um, usage. Okay, um, here are some other things that I'm going to show you actually in Affinity Photo now. So I will, I have here a lorem ipsum text. I split it in three paragraphs. And what I want to do here is, um, first of all, if you have text like this, instead of actually writing it uh, with the artistic tool, I would suggest you use the frame tool. So down here, click and hold on the text tool and then select the frame text tool. What this does for you is it gives you a box. Uh, let's select some text here, go over to the box. And you can see here, I can resize the box and the text will flow uh, in the how can I say in the limits that I'm giving the text uh, so you can see it, it overshoots the box a little bit uh, but it's it's changing the text based on the width that I'm giving it and this is very useful if you have a lot of text uh, otherwise you would have to split the single lines all the time and here it's done automatically for you. Another thing that I want to show you that's very useful is um, up here on text you have something that's called um, show paragraph so you have a paragraph tool and on the top line you have very useful tools so this is a line left a line center so you can see all the lines are centered now a line right so all the lines are uh, hitting the right side uh, so this is useful for example if you have designs over here a photo over here so the text is lining up on the right side of the picture then you can have block text and you can have centered block text you can see now it's blocked so this means that the text is spread out uh, in the width so it has a block shape which looks good to the eye but of course sentences can get spread and you have to try to write the text in a way for example here where you're able to split uh, the text in two so uh, the letters uh, or the words come together uh, uh, in a more how can I say good looking way uh, because affinity photo does not automatically split the words for you um, of course, there's the other versions, uh, justify right. So this means uh, it's a block text, but everything where there is just one or two words is uh, aligned on the right side. And then there is justify all, uh, which just spreads out, for example, here, the single words. I wouldn't use that unless uh, you don't have any single words in your text uh, on that are standing on a single line. Okay, uh, then... We have some other really interesting tools here. Uh, for example, you have space before paragraph. So you click on any paragraph in your text. Uh, so you have this blinking line here. So you have to be in the text. So you click on the paragraph. And now I can adjust 
the difference in uh, in space basically it can move it up and down uh, from this paragraph to the paragraph above it or if I want to I can do the same thing for the paragraph below it so that's very useful and another thing that you can do here so there's a lot of uh, first line you can have uh, what's it called here an indent so this is moving in the first line this can be some nice design or you can have some like icon here or uh, a glyph which is like a single character that's more fancy than the rest of the text but it's highlighting uh, a little bit the start of this paragraph stuff like that uh, can be done let's set it back to zero another thing that you can do here is a left indent of the whole paragraph so it's moving in from the left to the right or of course you can do it from the other side uh, with the right indent which here uh, doesn't do too much it's uh, it's just moving the text and let's uh, wait uh, let's align it right and then you can see it better so it's doing the same thing but from the other side so this is also a very useful tool okay um then you can adjust the tab stops. I didn't really play with that actually. So I'm not going to talk about that part because I'm not using tabs a lot. I'm using spaces or I move around the text with the mouse. And down here you can have different settings for the automatic justification like we have seen up here. So this is called justification. And you can say uh, like minimum word spacing and desired word spacing and the maximum word spacing of the stuff that can happen to the text. You can see you have seen that uh, letters or words have been stretched out to fit the design and this is adjusting that. And also with the minimum letter spacing, you can have the same thing. So this up here is for the word spacing and this down here is for the letter spacing. So this can be very useful to design interesting paragraphs uh, for your layout. Okay, another thing that I want to show you is um, when you work with, there are, how can I say, uh, uh, there are fonts that are made of symbols. I will show you real quick. I would just type something or no, I will not type anything. I will uh, go up here to text and then go to glyph browser, show glyph browser. And you get this here and you can go down. For example, you have uh, web dings. So web dings are those characters here. And if those are not as big as I am showing you here, you can go here on this, uh, these little lines up here. And you can go here, for example, smallest size, then they are really small. Or you can go to the largest size that are really large and all the steps in between that. And the way you use them is you just uh, select the one that you want. Uh, for example, we have an alien here, someone who's like skiing, uh, money back. You just double click on them. So this is how you use them. And of course, you can select them and you can change the size of them to anything you want. And so if you want to use these symbol fonts, sometimes they can be useful, sometimes they can be quicker than actually finding a design that fits and they are a nice collection. Uh, so if you want to use them, this is how you can easily use them. Of course, you can also just enter a font on your keyboard and it will write uh, the symbol or the the icon that is a ch that is linked to that font but it's really like trial and error so you might spend a lot of time finding the right one uh, so with the glyph browser you can actually just click on what you want or better said double click on what you want and you get the design that you want okay so that was the tutorial for today with a lot of information. If you have additional questions, if I left out something that's important to you, please tell me in the comments. If you like my tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. I do two tutorials per week. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get feedback on your own creations. You get my files with all the layers and, another, uh, and uh, a lot of other great benefits. Thank you very much and see you in the next tutorial. Bye.